Welcome to the Russian Rulers Podcast. Today's episode will be a slapshot podcast. The reason is, is because, well, I really wanted to become a Russian history professor, and that would have been my avocation. Fortunately, I've got to pay the bills in order to buy the books, in order to do this podcast, and it's been taking me away from being able to put together a good enough script so that I could uh, you know, present it to you. But today, what we're going to do is go over a little bit on something that Peter III did, uh, who was the predecessor to Catherine the Great, and who ruled Russia for just a few months. But what's amazing is w there were a few things that he did during this time that was uh, had a very big impact on Russia. And I'd like to go over that, which is the called the Manifesto Freeing the Nobility from Compulsory Service. Now, before I get into this, I'd like to... Uh, Thank a listener. Uh, didn't get your name. Sorry about that. But you did present a, a couple of questions to me. First off, what is the name of the song that starts the Russian Rulers podcast? Well, the name of it is called the Volga Boat Song. Uh, it is a very well-known song in Russia. It's a very old one about pu people pulling these boats down the Volga River. Uh, so it's uh, this one was sung by the uh, Soviet... Uh, Red Army Choir. Uh, also, the uh, other question that asked me is when I uh, end my show, I say, Das Vidanya is Spasiba Bolshoya. I wanted to know what that meant, and what it means is uh, uh, goodbye and thank you very much. So, just wanted to uh, clear that one up. What we're going to do now is go to the manifesto, Frame the Nobility. Well, Peter III had been on the Russian throne for only six months in 1762 when he was assassinated in a palace coup, uh, engineered on behalf of his wife, uh, Catherine. His brief reign nevertheless produced several important pieces of legislation, none more remarkable than this one. From the day it was proclaimed, the Manifesto on Noble Service generated controversy and confusion, and to this day, historians have been unable to reach a consensus either about the reasoning behind the law or about its consequences. Did the metropolitan nobility really want to be freed from the requirement to serve? If so, did they actually leave service once given the opportunity? Alternatively, did the autocracy want to free itself from a noble stranglehold over the service system? And if so, did this manifesto achieve the desired result? Now, before we go too far, what this did is during the time of Peter the Great, it was compulsory for the nobility to serve on uh, the state, and they had to serve for quite a long period of time, sometimes for their entire lives, and so did their children. What Peter the Third did is that this just doesn't work. Uh, I think that's you know a bit of an onerous uh, package to carry on the backs of these people. They should be given some free time to be able to enjoy their life, especially towards the end. So. Uh, here we go into it. Uh, in his everlasting glory, the most wise monarch, gracious sovereign, our grandfather Peter the Great, the emperor of all Russia, was obliged to bear such a heavy burden and carry out so many labors solely for the well-being and benefit of his fatherland, while at the same time uplifting Russia to a complete understanding of military, civil, and political affairs. To all of this, the whole of Europe, and also a large part of the world, bears true witness. But this renewal required, above all, in calculating and showing the nobility as the leading member in the state how great are the advantages of living under an enlightened power and the welfare of humanity as against the innumerable peoples who are mired in the depths of ignorance. Then at that very time, extreme circumstances obliged him, as a symbol of his kindness, to order the Russian nobility to engage in military and civil service and above and beyond that to educate their offspring in the various free sciences and also in a number of useful arts, all of which sent them to European states. For that very same reason, he established various schools in Russia itself in order to achieve the desired fruits with all due speed. It is true that such establishments initially seem burdensome and unbearable to the nobility, depriving them of rest, taking them away from their homes, continuing it against their wishes, military and other forms of service, and inscribing their children in the ranks. Some nobles concealed themselves, 
subjecting themselves not just to fines, but given the deprivation of their property for neglecting their own well-being and that of their descendants. And therefore, taking these circumstances into consideration by authority bestowed upon us from on high in our highest imperial mercy from this time forward unto eternity and to all generations to come, we grant to the entire Russian hereditary nobility their freedom and liberty. They may continue to serve either in our empire or in other European powers allied to us with the following stipulations. Now, there were a number of stipulations to this. And, of course, I'm reading this was uh, written by Peter and his uh, his advisors. So uh, there were a number of them. We're not going to go all of, you know through all of them, just a, a few. And this is a translation uh, by uh, Gary Marker. And it's in the book Interpreting Russian History, uh, which was compiled by Mr. Marker and Daniel Kaiser. So here's a few. Number one, all nobles who are currently in various branches of service may continue to serve as long as they wish and as long as their circumstances permit them. However, during campaigns or for a period beginning three months prior to them, military servitors dare not request retirement or leave from service. But at a campaign's conclusion, whether it be within or outside of the borders of the state, those who are in military service may request of their commanding officers release from service or retirement, and they may expect a resolution. Those who occupy the first eight ranks in each of our branches of service are released by our own supreme confirmation, and other ranks shall receive their disposition from, who, from the departments to which they belong. Another one was, whoever is in retirement from our service and wishes to depart for other European states is to receive the appropriate passport from our College of Foreign Affairs without difficulty, with the stipulation that, when necessity requires it, those nobles who find themselves abroad are to return to the fatherland. When the appropriate announcement is made on this matter, then in all that instance, every nobleman shall with all deliberate speed execute our will under penalty of sequestering his property. Those Russians who choose to continue their service in other European countries may, upon returning to their fatherland, fill vacant positions in our service according to their wishes and abilities. Those nobles who are currently serving as soldiers and other lower grades below commissioned officer may not retire with the exception of those who have maintained their service for more than 12 years. As we decree this our most merciful arrangement on behalf of the whole of the hereditary nobility for all time as a fundamental and unalterable, unalterable law, then, in conclusion of this, we by our imperial word most solemnly declare that we will maintain this to be sacred and unbreakable forevermore. Our lawful descendants may not annul this in any way for the preservation of this, our legal ruling, shall stand as an unwavering support of the sovereign all Russian throne. And Peter concludes, we nevertheless hope that the whole of the hereditary Russian nobility, having felt something of our generosity toward them and their descendants, will be moved by their own most loyal faithfulness and zeal not to abandon or hide themselves from service, but to enter into it eagerly and willingly, and to continue in it honorably and without disgrace, to the utmost extent possible. And it is no less important that they educate their children in appropriate subjects with diligence and enthusiasm. Since there are those who have had no service anywhere, but have simply passed all their time in idleness and inactivity, and have not instructed their children in these useful subjects in the interest of the fatherland, and thereby have not been mindful of the general good, we order all our truly loyal and true sons of the fatherland to scorn and demean them, and further, they shall not be tolerated at our court or at public gatherings and celebrations. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I will be back next week. I will be traveling to the East Coast, uh, to the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area. And as is my custom, I tend to write a lot of scripts up during my flights and then my layovers, which I hope are not too long this time. Uh, but there will be a regularly scheduled podcast next week. It will be on Catherine the uh, Great and her ascension to the throne 
and her murder of uh, her husband, Peter the Third. Again, hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Uh, of course, please don't forget to visit the websites, russianrulers.podhoster.com, or you can become a Facebook friend at Russian Rulers History Podcast. Uh, I'd like to thank all my listeners. We've now uh, gone over 60,000 subscribers to the Russian Ruler Podcast, so we're a growing community. Uh, please come to those places, websites, leave a comment, make a suggestion, ask a question, and as always, Das vidanya i spasiba bolshoya.